then just sit down on your buttocks, place the hands right next to your hips and slowly begin to relax the body all the way back. Notice the block and go ahead and maybe with your elbows on the floor, grab the block and place it in between your shoulder blades. So you really want this block to support your shoulder blades, which are in the upper back instead of the middle back. And then from here, go ahead and find your other block and place it behind and under your head, not on the neck, but the skull, right? You want it on the bone instead of the flesh of your neck. Very good. Just take a couple of breaths in here, noticing the sensations that arise while you settle in this position. Notice the shoulders beginning to relax as the chest broadens and opens wide. Notice your lower back as well, how the pelvis, the uh, tailbone is tucked under, kind of like naturally lifting the hip bones and the pubic bone towards the navel. And from here, if you feel comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. You can stay with your feet locked on the mat or you can start extending those legs completely on top of your mat and forward. So depending on how the physical body feels in this position. Maybe go ahead and move the shoulders forward and away from the ears. And instead of opening the arms too much in a capital T, go ahead and close them so your fingers can face the, where your feet are, right? So whatever is in front of you. Let's start working on the breath. But today I want you to let your breath go. Try not to get into any pranayama technique. Today I was reading about pranayama and how babies breathe. The thing is that babies already know how to breathe. They don't need any pranayama, any uh, breath control to help them cope and relax. They just breathe naturally and depending on the mood, then the breath becomes more shallow, more deep, more short, etc. It's when we start creating experience in our lives, stress, anxiety, uh, etc. Then that's when we start contracting our breath. So it's not like we don't know how to breath, breathe, it's that we forget how to breathe correctly, the way babies do. So today I'm gonna to ask you to just let go and to find your baby breath. That one that moves you very naturally, that one that makes you flow naturally. As you find your shoulder blades are really relaxing and rooting on top of the block. So you can let go of the tension of your body. So soften here, the muscles of your face, your eyelids, the space in between your eyebrows. your jaw, the muscles around your throat. And without deepening the breath or making any adjustments here and there, just let the breath guide. Let your body and your breath connect deeply without you getting in the way. Nice job. Maintain your eyes closed here. Extend your arms above your head and go ahead and 
grab each elbow with each hand here and instead of pressing and pushing those arms down just let gravity take over Use slowly the body unwinding here opening up so you keep finding your baby breath or maybe let your baby breath find you very good. Let the other forearm be on top. Notice how the shoulder blades kind of move away from each other as you keep broadening the upper back. Very good. Now I'm going to extend those arms all the way up towards the ceiling, palms facing each other. Go ahead and send those shoulders into their socket. Keep opening the chest across the collarbone and begin to internally rotate the arms. So kind of like your palms are facing the back of the room. Keep internally rotating. Notice the shoulder blades moving away from each other. Now from here, just move again your wrists so your palms are facing each other, but keep broadening the upper back and the external rotation of the shoulders. And from here, go ahead and bend the elbows and grab the block behind and under your head. Elbows in. Squeeze the block in between your palms, maybe your wrist, maybe if part of your forearms are touching the block, go ahead and squeeze everything in. And now try to move your elbows so they face the back of the room. Creating length in the upper back. So maybe you need to move your hands down towards the mat so you can create more space and your elbows can keep face in the back of the room. Squeeze in. A couple more breaths here. Nice job, everyone. Let's go ahead and extend those arms. Let's create some circles here at the wrist. Just circle your hands, your wrists in both directions. And whenever you're ready, again, extend those arms. Palms facing each other. Forget about your legs. We're still working on the shoulders. So relax the lower body. Internally rotate the arms. So the palms are now maybe facing the back of the room. Notice how you can broaden the back a little bit more. One more. Palms facing each other without getting out of that external rotation in the shoulders. Bend the elbows and again, grab the block. Maybe move the hands closer to the mat this time and squeeze it. Think about expanding the upper back. One more. Nice shot, go ahead and lift the arms, bend the elbows and slowly release the hands on the floor. Very good, bend each knee, open up your feet, Mat distance apart. Now notice how slowly the lower back shifts. And instead of lifting the pubic one towards the navel, now you're kind of arching the lower back. Pivot the toes in towards each other and now knock the knees towards each other as well. Take a couple of breaths. Nice shot. Stay here with your legs and your knees touching. Open up your arms in a capital T and come into cactus arms. Now the hands, the forearms, the shoulders are not touching the floor. They're on the air. And without moving the head to see the sides, open your eyes and maybe send the gaze without moving your head, everyone, to the left and to the right and see if you can Align the elbows with the shoulders. 
Nice, stay here. Notice how around the armpit, the chest, the pecs begin to open up. Palms facing up. Keep broadening the upper back. Shoulder blades moving away from each other. As gravity takes over here, trying to move your arms closer to the floor. A couple more breaths. Nice, send those elbows, forearms, and palms together in front of your face. And squeeze everything in again. Keep broadening the upper back, shoulder blades moving away from each other. Lift the forearms away from your face a couple of inches. Two more. Nice job, everyone. Elbows to chest, release slowly the arms down. And now let's roll to the right side. Notice that your back is gonna feel a little bit tender, so move slowly and mindfully. Go ahead and move your props away and lay down again on your back. Now, the spine is going to try to find the floor. Let it be knees to chest, apanasana. Stay here, little by little, better, 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 better. Without you moving too much and making your spine touch the floor, let the spine slowly find its way completely on the mat. Keep the breath. Nice. Right knee on top of left, everyone. Try to cross the legs as much as you can. And send those knees to your chest. Little by little, maybe feeling the outer hips, maybe feeling the right uh, glute awakening. Stay here. And now go ahead and move your feet towards each other. Squeeze the shin bones towards each other. So now instead of those feet away from each other, you want to now move everything into the center of your mat. Keep sending the knees to your chest. Notice the outer hips, right? And not too much to the flesh, but more deep, close to the butt. Very good. If at this point it feels comfortable to double wrap and place the right foot under the left calf, then go ahead and do so. Eagle legs, right? If not, again, press everything in, maintain the shin bones close to each other. Open up your arms in a capital T. Left arm on top of right, make a big X, and again, let's bind those arms in eagle arms. If it doesn't feel comfortable here, then maintain your elbows, palms, and forearms together like we already did while we were on top of our blocks. Very good. From here, lifting the chest and the head, try to reach the knees with your elbows, go ahead and release. Control the movement, go slowly and again. And three. Four. Squeeze everything to the middle, line up your mat. Keep lifting. And seven. And eight. Two more. Nice. 
Nice job. And take your legs the way they are. Open up your arms. If you have your block close by, go ahead and grab it with your right hand. We're going to twist. So whether you are in um, eagle legs or you're just pressing everything in, go ahead and try to place the block under your shin bones as you open up your arms in capital T or cactus and you release the foot, the shin bone, whatever, on top of the block. So let the block under in an area of that leg, maybe the knee, maybe the calf, maybe the ankle, and give yourself a little bit of a boost here in order to feel comfortable and deepen up the twist. Notice the physical body. Notice the breath. Does it want to become a little bit deeper? Are you still breathing very short? What's the natural curse of your breath at this point? One more. Nice job. Go ahead and come back and on a one. Knees to chest up and us. And I go ahead and make circles here with your feet, knees, and thighs together. Just massage the lower back. Very good. And now moving the opposite direction. Massage the kidneys, the sides of your glutes. If you can really rotate in a big, big circle. Nice shot. Very good. Left knee on top of right. Try to create a big X as much as you can. Very good. Send the knees to your chest. No worry about your feet. Just yet try to unwind a little bit those hip flexors and notice how the thighs and how tight you feel and if you can maintain the chest open as you keep sending those knees to the chest. Very good. Now let's work on sending the feet and the, the shin bones together. Naturally, automatically, the thighs are going to move away from the hip bones in order for you to bind and maintain everything in the middle line. So take a breath here. And notice if you can double wrap or you stay with your feet together as much as you can. Very good. Open up your arms in a capital T. Right arm on top of left. Big X. Go ahead and bind. Double wrap or just wrap once. Broaden in the upper back as you keep relaxing the head of your shoulders to the floor. Inhale deeply. Exhale, go ahead and lift up. And instead of sending the knees towards your elbows, go ahead and lift the elbows and move towards your knees. Go ahead and up and down. Ten times here, trying to control the movement. And to notice every area of your body that you're using in order to lift yourself up. Two more here. Maintain your legs erupt, open up your arms, go ahead and grab your block, measure and begin to rotate the hips to the left. Place the block under your ankle, your knee, your shin bone, 
and maintain the right shoulder rooting that. So remember, you've been practicing yoga, I'm going to say, a long time. A lot of you have been with me for a long time. You know your practice. So if something doesn't feel right, modify. This pose is like if we were placing the block in between our inner thighs and then just twisting left and right. So if this doesn't feel good today, then go ahead a little bit simpler and just twist like you we normally do in class. So listen to the body and follow your intuition. And shop, everyone. Let's go ahead and lift up on a wine. Knees to chest. Lift the head and the chest. And go ahead and place your feet down again. Good. We're going to maintain the shoulder blades away from each other. Okay, so we're going to lift the hips, but we're now going to work the upper body by sending the shoulder blades close to each other. I'm going to place my hands down on the mat. I can grab the mat or just press with my hands. Lift the hips. Engage the glutes. Hold it and release the sacrum down. And again, lift up. And release. And again. And release. And four. Now, reach your back with your heels energetically. Like if you can move your feet towards the back and release. And three more. Just awakening those big muscles, the glutes, the hamstrings. And one more, trying to spin the inner thighs towards the floor. Nice job. Let's release and roll slowly to the right side until we come into a seating position. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap my blanket. And sit down here. Very good. My strap. So extend your legs all the way forward in Dandasana. Palms right next to your hips. Palms pressing down as you lift it through the crown of the head. Engage the quads. And just try to glue the back of your legs on the floor. Very good. Let's grab this strap. Micro bend the knees and place the strap around your feet. Shoulders plucked in. Shoulders on top of your hips. Very good. Begin to lift from the view. We're going all the way to the chest. And slowly bend the elbows and forward fold. Just halfway there. Now, try to reach forward with your hands until your arms are completely straight. Breathe a couple of times here to expand the back body. And on your next exhale, go ahead and maybe try to reach your forward a little bit more. Now, modifying this uh, pose, you can micro bend the knees. You can stay micro bending the knees. And you're actually going to feel it even more on the hamstrings, as if you just only use your flexibility. So again, use your flexibility or use your strength. If you bend a little bit the knees, then you're going to really feel those hamstrings engaging. When you relax and you are able to extend completely the legs and straighten the legs, then now you're going to feel it also more in the back, right? So try a little bit, bend a little bit and see if you can feel the hamstrings and then go ahead and release the back of your knees down and maybe you're going to be able to feel it more in the back. I mean in the back meaning lower and middle back. Very good, a couple more breaths.
Nice job, everyone. Let's go ahead and push ourselves up. Let's cross the legs, move the blanket, and come into all fours. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Inhale to open up the chest, to melt the heart. And go ahead and exhale, round the back. Take your time. Inhale here. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more. And exhale. Very good. From here, let's go ahead and extend the right leg back. I'm going to show you first here, and then I'll move again and rotate so you can see the whole movement. So let's just extend the leg all the way back. And instead of micro bending, go ahead and lift the knee as much as you can. Engage in the quad. Good. Lift the left arm up and forward. And come into tabletop. So instead of coming into cow pose, right, arching, or cat pose, rounding, come into tabletop. Lift to the pubic bone towards the navel. Maintaining the back broaden. So move the shoulder blades away from each other. I'm going to curl my back toes for more balance. And I'm going to start lifting my right leg from my inner thigh. Lift as much as you can. Very good. Now, moving dynamically, move the right leg to the right, the left arm to the left. Like if you were going to fly, like capital T with the right leg, capital T with the left arm. And go ahead and come forward again and back, neutral position. And again, two, palm facing down, push the right wall with the right heel and come back. And three. Move very slowly and mindfully. And four. It's better if you do two, controlling the movement instead of five, and really just moving, trying to get out of the pose. Very good. And now place the hand and the knee on the floor. Let's go into child's pose very quick. Big toes touch. Relax. The forehead down and relax also the forearms on the floor. Take a couple of breaths. Nice shot. Let's go ahead and tabletop position. Now extending the left leg all the way back. Lift the knee. Lift the thigh off the mat. Let's go ahead and extend the right arm forward and up. And notice if you're placing more weight on the left wrist or the right knee. Can you distribute that weight evenly? Lift the ribs, softening them up towards the spine. Go ahead and whenever you're ready, lift the leg from the inner thigh. Very good. Tailbone drawing towards the back heel. One more. Go ahead and slowly open up to the side. Push through the heel and come up. And two. And three. And four. And last one. And the knees to the floor. 
child's pose. This time, let's send those arms to the right, extending and stretching the left side of the torso. Keep walking those fingertips to the side. Very good. Let's walk to the left. Big stretch from the lats all the way to the armpit, to the triceps, to the fingertips. Come back. Extend those arms up forward. Lift the wrist. Lift the forearms. Just root those palms down. Come up into your hands and knees. Curl the toes. Downward facing dog, everyone. Go ahead and bend your knees and stretch. Moving along with your breath. Leaning your hips side to side a little bit to stretch now, not just the outer hips, but the IT bands and that connect all the way from the hips to the outer knees to the outer ankles. Beautiful, everyone. If your strap is not in front of you, go ahead and move it in front of your mat because we're going to be using it. Very good. From in here, inhale, come forward to play top of a push up. Go ahead and place the knees on the floor or not, and just come into your toes, your tippy toes. And then go ahead and stand the way back again to your heels. Good? Like really stretching from the back of your knee to the heels. And again, tippy toes, shoulders on top of fingertips, and back. You can place the knees on the floor, everyone, if you need to. So you will be like moving forward and back in case you pack the knees on the floor. Two more. Move the shoulder blades away from each other. Don't let the shoulder blades touch on the back, and then slowly bend your elbows. Cha, paranga, very good. From here, grab your straw, interlace the fingers on the back. If you know that you can extend the arms, or just again, grab your strap in between your hands. Good? Whatever you do, maintain the arms straight. Top of the feet pressing down. Root the pubic bone down on the floor and lift the chest and the shoulders. And release. And again, inhale, lifting the knees, lifting the thighs of the mat. And release. And again, lift and send the face all the way to the back of the room or the strap if you're using it. And release. Nice shot. Hands right next to your lower ribs. Inhale, halfway up, half cobra right here. Elbows in. Exhale, knees to floor, push into tabletop and press back into downward facing dog. Full deep breath. Nice shot. Lift the right leg up. Let's go ahead and send the right knee to the chest. And place the foot in between your hands. Grab the strap again and lift up into Alanasana. You can do this pose with the back knee down if you need to, okay? If you don't feel like coming into Alanasana, then go ahead and come into Anjaniasana, okay? Very good. From here, grab the strap and place the strap on top of your left elbow. And lift the left arm up. Internally rotate the arm, go ahead and bend the elbow and grab the strap. Nice. Open up the right arm in the capital T. Bend the elbow and grab the strap on the back. Now 
Nice job, everyone. If you're here, hip lift in the chest. If you're here, go ahead and extend the back leg, forward, the back leg and reach it forward through the crown of the head. Lift the lower belly up. Keep pushing to the front heel. One more breath. Nice job, everyone. Let's go ahead and release it. the hands. Left hand down on the floor or block. If you are with the back knee, you still can place that left hand down and revolve to the right side. With the knee on the floor or the leg completely straight. One more here. Go ahead and place a hand on the floor. Step to plank. A front plank. Go into chaturanga with knees on the floor or not. Stay low in cobra or lift into urban mukha with your thighs up, everyone. And whenever you're ready, downward facing dog. Fold the breath. It's not baby breaths anymore. Now we're getting into deep waters now. Move the shoulder blades away from your neck, everyone, and keep internally rotating the arms in downward facing dog. Nice job. Lift the left leg up from the inner thigh. And go ahead and send the left knee to the chest, placing the foot in between your hands. Go ahead and grab the straps, micro bend the back knee, and decide if you want to come into Anjani Asana or Alanasana. So whatever you did on the other side. So we're going to place this strap on the opposite shoulder of that front leg. So this case is the right shoulder. Very good. Lift the left arm up, internally rotate the arm, and go ahead and bend the elbow, grabbing this strap. Maintain the elbow facing up. Nice. Open up the right arm, and bind. So if you use the other leg, sometimes you go left and then you go right, or sometimes I say left, but I'm going right. <laughs> Just try to remember what arm and what leg it's next and find balance in your practice. Nice shot. Go ahead and begin to extend the back leg and reach your forward into torpedo with a binding on your arms. If you're here, just keep lifting, lifting through the chest. One more breath. Nice shot. Let's go ahead and release the right hand down on the floor. Reach and revolve the left side as you open up the arm. Two more breaths. Beautiful. Go ahead and place the hand on the floor. Step to the plank. You can press it back into downward facing dog or go ahead into chaturanga. Upper dog. Downward dog. Hold deep breath. Very good, everyone. Let's go ahead and from here, bend the knees, walk your hands halfway towards your feet, and then open up your feet mat distance apart. Maybe a little bit wider than mat distance apart. Very good. We're going to start with the right hand. So you can always place a block under your left hand for more support. And then go ahead and with your right hand, grab the left ankle. 
twist here. Send the chest and the head under that left arm. If you're on a block, it's maybe a little bit easy to maintain the legs straight. So work on your legs. Yes, we're twisting. Yes, it's a big bind in here. But try to maintain those legs straight as much as you can. Send those thighs to the back of the room as you keep lifting the kneecaps. One more. Nice shot. Now place the block if you need it under that right hand and go ahead and grab the right foot with your left hand. It's not the foot, it's actually the ankle that you're grabbing. Turn the hips back like if you were still in downward facing dog. One more here. Very good. Come back into downward facing dog. Move with your hands all the way forward and close in the distance in between your feet. Hip bone distance apart. Very good. Let's place those knees on the floor. We're going to keep stretching the now the lower body in order to go into our peak pose, right? So instead of flowing, we're just gonna place that right or foot forward where you can use your blocks. Some of us are gonna come into our fingertips, some of us are gonna place a bit full palm on the blocks. But try to stay with the few we're going lifting up instead of hinging forward. Very good. Let's keep working on the hamstrings. So I'm going to go ahead and curl my back toes the way I'm at doing it. And then I'm going to send the knee towards the glute. And I'm going to try to engage my hamstring as much as I can from the back of the knee to where the hamstring meets the glute. And I'm just going to release. And then two. And release. And three. And if you... Um, Point the toes, you might feel a little bit different than instead of um, flexing. So try it and notice which one feels more intense and if you want more intensity or less intensity. Couple more. Nice shot. Two more. Nice. Now, some of us are going to stay here, and this is enough. This is a lot of engagement, actually. But some of us, with the same hand, the same side of that leg, in this case, the left one, we're going to try to reach the foot. If you still want to do it, right, then go ahead and take, a time, take your time to place this strap around the left ankle. So instead of grabbing the foot, you're grabbing the strap. But again, we're not hinging forward. We're trying to maintain the uh, shoulder on top of the hip as much as we can. Now roll the shoulders back, lift the chest. And if you feel like you wanna challenge yourself a little bit more, then try to wrap the foot with both hands. Keep sending the shoulders back. Opening up the chest as much as you can. One more breath. Nice job. Let's go ahead and slowly release. Place the hands on your blocks. We're going to lift up. Okay? And then go ahead and peel the front toes off the mat. The back heel isn't going to touch the floor, but that's fine. You're just taking a couple of breaths here to get again on that right hamstring. Right hip back. Peel up the belly. In and up.
Nice job, everyone. Bend both knees and place that right knee down. Nice job. Second side. Left. A foot forward. And just come into your blocks. Lift, lift, lift the chest and maintain the few big ones towards the navel as you draw the tailbone down towards the floor. For a nice stretch for the right hip flexor here. Very good. Let's start with the hamstring. Flex or point. Find the sweet spot. Now, I really, I'm going to encourage you to take and hold just for half a second. Well, maybe more than half a second. One second and a half, actually. And really hold. Notice that muscle engaging. A couple more. Nice. Very good. So we're going to stay here, some of us, here or here, or we're going to try to reach the foot with the right hand. If you cannot reach the foot with the right hand and you really want to grab the foot, then go ahead and place it, strap around. Ooh, I'm losing balance. So the block is right there. If I lose balance, I know that I can always lean on that left side. Get lifting the beautiful ones towards the navel. That's the way you're going to get into the hip flexor or that the thigh. And work now. Maybe if you did it on the other side, go ahead and extend those arms and lift, 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 lift the chest. One more. And slowly go ahead and release. Very good. Let's lift the hips up. If you need a couple more uh, breaths where you are before you move into the next pose, take your time. You know where we're going. So hold as much as you need to to find the balance in between both sides. And move on your own pace. One more. Nice shot. Let's go ahead and bend both knees. Knees to floor. One more vinyasa if you want to go ahead. If not, then just come into child's pose. Downward facing dog. Plank pose. Chaturanga. All four dog. And downward dog. Nice job, everyone. Let's go ahead and place the knees on the floor. Good. Candle pose. And I'm going to do candle pose against the wall. And I'm going to use this wall right here. So if you have a wall, go ahead and find it. If not, you can do it in the uh, center of your mat, in the center of wherever you're at, so no worries. The thing about the... Um, wall is that it's going to help you maintain more alignment on your lower body so you don't want to have the hips behind your knees you want to have the knees and the hips in the same uh, line right so i'm going to go ahead and place my blocks right next of my legs and it's actually between my knees and 
at my heel. So right in the middle, I'm going to place my blocks. And I like to come into my toes instead of placing the full top of my foot on the floor. So you find your sweet spot again. Now, if you are on your toes, you don't want your heels to move away from each other, right? So maintain your heels hugging in towards each other. Okay, so from here, my thighs are against my wall. And this is kind of pretty cool because I can find myself grabbing here if you don't have this set up. Just, just, you know, just relax here, really trying to press those thighs forward. Lifting the pubic bone towards the navel and trying to draw the tailbone down. Good. From here, I'm going to place my hands on my lower back, not to press my lower back forward, but to, uh, to actually create space, right, from my tailbone uh, in, in between my lower back. So I'm just pressing my uh, tailbone down as I keep pressing forward through my thighs and then extend my arms and find the blocks. Opening up the chest, rolling the shoulders to the back, lifting the back of my heart. If I feel comfortable on my neck, I can let and loose up a little bit of the head. If not, I can keep sending the chin to the chest. So your turn. If you did it already, and if you want to challenge a little bit more yourself, instead of grabbing the blocks, maybe you can, with your tip of your fingers, touch your heel. So let's do it again. Pubic bone, hip bones, uh, thighs, and hip flexors very close to the wall. Hands on your lower back. Go ahead and begin to arch your upper back and grab whatever you're going to grab. Keep sending those thighs forward because you don't want to send the hips back towards your heel. That's not camel pose. Right? And then maybe loosen up a little bit more. Open up the chest. Open heart. Open mind. Open body. One more here. Nice job, everyone. Slowly go ahead and release. Very good. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to bring my stuff back. And now I'm going to sit again on my blanket because I'm going to come into one more twist. So twist things warm up the spine, right, for back bends. And twist things also help unwind the spine after back bends. At the beginning, we did a little bit of ab work. It is important to maintain the core engaged when we're going into back bends. The core supports the lower back. The lower back supports the lower belly. So they're connected to, it, it is nice to work a little bit on the abs while we open up the body in back bends. Very good. Let's grab the strap. Place it very close to you. And I'm gonna go ahead and place my right knee down. Good. So my knee wants to face forward as much as it can, but if it doesn't, no worries. Just place the knee on the floor. But if you can, move that thigh and align it with the front of your mat. Very good. Now I'm gonna place my foot close to that left foot. If I can cross the way we did at the beginning when we were doing the eagle legs, then go ahead and cross. Very good. I'm going to go ahead and grab my strap. And I might, I should, I might should give you my back. Please side back. <laughs> I didn't think it through. Okay, I'm going to grab my strap with my left hand, right? And then I'm going to go, I'm going to grab my, my strap with my right hand. And then I'm going to go with my left hand inside. And then I'm just touching right here, 
right? My hand, if I bend my elbow, it's right here. It doesn't go all the way back, and that's fine. I'm just going to place my left shoulder on the inside of my knee, okay? You see that? With my right hand, I'm going to go ahead and wrap, and I'm going to try to bump. I might be able to wrap my hands, my fingers. It doesn't matter. You have your strap there, and now I'm going to try to floor ripple. Now, my left uh, sitting bone is not on the floor, okay? So it's a pretty um, uneven pose. Okay, it's just more of the band, banding, um, binding the arms and forward fold. Again, you can always place that foot on the other side and you can find your binding this way. Okay, so this is a little bit more challenging. Here, you still will do the pose. So maybe start here, right? And then go ahead and with the left arm, same arm of that leg, lift it up, and send the shoulder forward. So you're forward folding. Good, and now send that hand to the back. And it's right there. Mine doesn't go all the way back, it's just right there. Now with the strap in the right hand, go ahead and send the arm back, and maybe you're able to wrap the strap on the back of your body. There you go. Take a couple of breaths. This is one of the poses where you see those yogis into converted into pretzels, right? And they can wrap those arms and they can go all the way down. And it's it's a, a very good squeeze for the internal organs. Very good. A couple more breaths in here. Nice job, everyone. Let's go ahead and slowly unwind the arms and go to the second side. So now my left knee is going to be in front of me. And then I'm going to place my right foot close to my right shin. If you really want to work on crossing the leg over, go ahead. You have those uh, options. Good. Now, the strap. This time it's going to be on the left arm, so the opposite arm of the leg that you're bending and you're placing the foot down. Now, that right arm, lift it up, internally rotate and send it forward. Good. And now I'll go ahead and send the hand to the back. There you go. Now with that left arm, circle, 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 the same way we did in that pose where we were with the knees on the floor and we were opening up the arm. Palm facing down, go ahead and find your bind. Nice job, everyone. Let's go ahead and on one. Very good. Let's lay down on our mats. Let's windshield wipe. Opening up the distance in between our feet. Mat distance apart. Nice job. Feet flat on the mat, set to Bandha Sarvangasana. With the feet down, your hands maybe are able to touch, barely touch those heels. Grab the outer arches of your mat. Maintain your knees, hip bone distance apart, inner thighs spinning forward. As when you lift the hips, now they're spinning down towards the floor. Now, move your shoulders towards each other. Maybe you grab the strap or you interlace the fingers 
behind your back as you send the chest towards your face, towards the back of the room. If you are binding those hands and arms and behind your back, go ahead and micro bend the elbows, and the elbows can be touching the floor as well. So you can push with the triceps, you can push with the elbows, with the forearms, the floor away, so you can lift the body a little bit more. Engage everything in. And up, one more. Slowly, everyone. Breathe. Very good. Knees to chest. Open your arms in capital T or cactus. We're just going to rotate side to side. We're now going to release the knees on the floor. We're going to engage the core. We're going to work on those abdominals. We're going to massage again the back. Now, shove everyone, knees to chest. Go ahead and grab your feet. Happy baby. If you feel comfortable, go ahead and rock your baby. And then shove and knees to chest, lift the head and the chest up the mat, give yourself a hug. And shove us. And if you want to use that wall that you use for camel pose, for then you can go ahead and go and place the legs against the wall for shavasana. So that way we'll, you know, we'll press the buttocks on the wall and lift the legs. If not, just take your regular shavasana. I'm going to give you here a couple of minutes. I'm going to be in silence. And then I will guide you to our seated position. Let's begin to deepen up your breath. To wiggle your toes, your fingers, your head. And 
You can extend your arms above your head, stretch it here. Bend one knee after the other, roll to the right side in fetal position. Imagine coming up, taking your first big deep breath. As you sit comfortable with your palms together at your heart in gratitude. Thank you all of you for being here today, for walking this path together. Growing along my side. Lifting the heart, bowing the head, and dropping all our wisdom with it. With so much respect and love, everyone, namaste.